All right, here we go. The main name system, also known as DNS. In this video, I'm going to attempt to explain it in a way where it's easier to understand. Again, that's the shtick of my channel, guys. So I'm going to try to do that. Uh, but before we do so, please take one second to like the video. I'm sure you will enjoy it. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And let's get into it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about DNS. So for that, I think we're going to start with our most commonly used website, and that is google.com. Just by typing in google.com, you are using DNS. So even if you're unaware of what DNS is, you are using it every time you are using the internet. So keep that in mind. It's very interesting in the way that actually works. So if we type in DNS in google.com, if possible, it's going to pull from the wikipedia.org and it's going to give us an explanation of what it is and possibly a few images of it. We can get back to that, but let's kind of, kind of glance over it to see what it says. DNS stands for Domain Name System and here it uh, implies that it's IP, meaning Internet Protocol. So Domain Name System here implies that it's used by internet protocol. So the way I'm going to actually go about this video is explaining DNS to people who are not familiar with the, what DNS is, basically somebody who's new to computer science. So if we look at the quick description here, and this description comes directly from the Wikipedia, it says the main name system is hierarchical and decentralized naming system for computer services. And or other resources connected to the internet or a private network. So this seems like a good source for us to actually go to and uh, we're going to do so. We're going to go to our Wikipedia link there and we're going to use this as our basically learning material, sort of like a textbook because Wikipedia, although anybody can technically edit it, uh, generally speaking, is correct with the information that it's proposed or with the information that is presented, I should say. And also it's part of creative comments. So that way it's okay for me to use this text as part of my video. Okay, here we go. The main name system. And we're going to read this again real quick and I'm going to try to teach it in a way just like you would teach it in a classroom. The main name system is hierarchical and decentralized naming system for computer services or other resources connected to the internet or a private network. So if we start from the beginning here and just literally concentrate on the meaning of DNS, it will give us a really good idea and understanding of what DNS is. So if you look at first word here, it says domain. Domain is basically a group of computers. A group of computers that are connected on some level. In this case, it's connected, they're connected at the application level, which basically is the entirety of the internet. So if you look at the here, the internet protocol suite here, and it talks about application layer and has DNS in here, application layer is part of the OSI layer, and there are seven layers of that. Now, let's get back to the word domain. Again, domain means just a place. Okay, think of domain as in uh, back in the day of... Uh, uh, well, well, okay, let's talk about King Arthur, right? King Arthur's legend, and uh, it, it's a fictional story, obviously, but you know how they have their own kingdoms and domains? That's pretty much what it is. So if King Arthur is within his kingdom, he has his domain. That's basically his area and everything around that, that he controls. That's his domain. So you can look, think about it in the same way as in computers. Okay. And you can have domains at local level, obviously, you know, just because King Arthur controls a certain amount of land and area, and that's his domain, that doesn't mean that businesses for example a large business can have their own private domain this is why it talks about private networks here at the last part of this sentence so if you work at a business they're going to have their own private domain that doesn't necessarily follow the rules or belong to internet at all it's private for security reasons right and then if we look at the other word that kind of connects 
to the that connects to it so domain name basically it's it's literally that it's the name of the domain so in this example the easiest example and the perfect example of that is where we are right now if you look at wikipedia.org that's called a domain name so you see how that's kind of tying tying in together so you have a domain but of course you got to name it you got to give it a name in this case the the name of this domain name is wikipedia Dot org and it could be anything like google.com yahoo.com microsoft.com or whatever so where and so the question comes up here so how does wikipedia.org here how does wikipedia.org have a domain where does it get it from who names this domain so if we ask king arthur what is the name of your domain you know he might say well it's called wikipedia you know <laughs> And that's kind of, uh, but for that to happen, we need some kind of a system to actually does that. Uh, in this case, we don't, uh, King Arthur can name his domain whatever he wants, as long as it's a private domain uh, and, and you can request that. But if it's a public domain, in this case, wikipedia.org, then we need a system for that. Get it? So it's a domain name system. This is why if you were to go to a website that sells domain name so let's say you decide that you suddenly want wikipedia.org for yourself you search for it and it's going to say well looks like somebody else already reserved the right to call their uh, website or their domain that so it's a public domain name uh, this is not owned the name wikipedia might be owned by a wikipedia company but it's not owned, domain is not owned by anybody. You cannot own a domain. It's a public thing unless you reserve the right and pay for the right to use it. So if Wikipedia forgets to renew their right to use wikipedia.org and let's say I or you go to, I don't know, any of those websites that, that can sell you a domain name for your website and then you reserve it, there that it belongs to you for that amount of time that you reserved it for and for that to happen you need a dns or a domain name system whether it's set up to work in a internet environment which it is um, then or or whether it's on a private network in which case a private company will have their own domain which would be called I don't know, private network number five dot com. You know, you can call whatever you want because it's going to be centralized, you know. And of course, for all of and of course, for all of this to happen, you got to have some kind of hierarchy, right? Hierarchy means just an order of things. And for that, the DNS system itself controls that. So whenever you go and, you know, you try to get your own domain name, let's say, Bob Bobson.com. I don't know. It could be anything really. It could be I want a domain name.com. You know, it's inches are you can reserve that as well. But it is a naming system for computers. There is a lot more to it uh, than just getting the name for your website. There is a part of it uh, that kind of talks about or explains on how it actually works in the background and what what is the other purpose of the DNS? So it is a naming system for computer services or other resources connected to the internet or a private network. So we already explained that, but let's see how it actually works. Why is it, why do we even need it? Why is it even there, you know? Aside from just being a hierarchical uh, order of things, like a, I don't know, phone book. You know how you have a phone book, everybody's got their own names and their phone numbers in it that's the part that's kind of what dns does as well except it instead of instead of just having um, names for example wikipedia.org it will also have instead of phone numbers associated with it will have ip addresses associated with it or routed to it and just kind of hold on to that hold on to that thought 
and uh, we will <laughs> we will touch on that here in a moment as well. So let's let's read the next sentence. It associates various information with the main names assigned to each of the participating entities. So what are they talking about here? You know how I talked about a phone book and how there are people in the phone book. So there is a person's name in there and there is their phone number. Same thing happens with the DNS. You have, for example, wikipedia.org and then we know that's wikipedia.org. Well, the DNS system needs to know what is the IP address that it goes to. So in this case, you can say that the wikipedia.org is a person in the phone book, but in order to reach that person, you got to call the number, right? In this case, wikipedia.com, when you type in wikipedia.org, I'm sorry, not .com, wikipedia.org, it dials that number for you in the sense, if you will. But in this case, it's an IP address. So what is this IP address? All right, let's find out. I'm glad you asked. <laughs> All right, I'm just going to co open up a command command prompt, command line. I'm going to ping it. I'm going to ping wikipedia.org. And there it is. <laughs> Here is the IP address for wikipedia.org. So if we were looking at wikipedia.org, if we were looking at a phone book or a directory in our case it's going to be a domain name book domain name book right and looked up wikipedia imagine we we're flipping through pages and we we're like wikipedia 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 wikipedia.org aha and then there is the number to dial basically to get to it by pinging wikipedia.org we get an ip address of the location where wikipedia is located its home address if you will if we're still using the analogy of the phone book very simple in this case i know this looks kind of confusing this doesn't look like a regular ip address but this is actually a version 6 ip address this is why it looks like that it's a combination of letters and numbers but i'm sure you guys are used to seeing you know typical ip addresses like you see at home for example 192.168.0.1 or whatever you know this is just the version 6 of that IP address. These are the new homes, guys. These are the new homes that are built for the internet. All right. I hope that kind of gives you a an idea of what... I hope I'm actually successful in telling you, explaining to you what DNS is and what it does at a basic level uh, for somebody who is... Uh, being introduced to computer science. So, and of course, if you keep reading this, and I highly encourage you that you do go read this uh, on Wikipedia, it says here, most prominently in translates more readily memorize the main names to the numerical IP addresses needed for locating and identifying computer services and devices and devices with the underlying network protocols. So it basically tells you exactly what I told you in just more of a textbook type of way, you know, and then we can, uh, you know, I can go through this here and just keep going through each sentence and keep breaking everything down, but then it will kind of confuse you uh, even more because literally first two sentences uh, can be used in my, for me to explain to you uh, what the DNS stands for. And if you want to kind of understand it even more on a more technical level, you can literally go through here and read it for yourself. Uh, but again, in this video, I just wanted to make sure that DNS is understood for people who are just, um, you know, starting to learn DNS or hey, people, maybe people who just don't know what DNS is. Maybe they heard of it, but they don't know how it works on a basic level. And well, at least they don't know how to maybe they don't understand that um, in the way I explain it. You know, I have a specific way of explaining things and this is what, uh, uh, this is what makes me unique, I guess. And I think some people like it and because it's just different way of approaching the same issues in the sense of how do we learn these computer terms. So the way I explain it, I always try to relate it to the real world examples 
as best as I can. I hope you like my style of teaching. Please let me know what you think. If you have any comments, please leave them below. You know what? If you just need help or if you want me to do make another video, just let me know. I'll gladly do them. And I like the way I teach. I try to relate it to the real world so that way it's easy to understand. I hope you appreciate this. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.